Lawrence Robert Hink of Hoopston, Illinois, O.X. Bellyman of Yellow Jump, North Dakota, and Homer U. McDancy of East Brain, Oregon. And that's the tip. Splendid, right? Splendid. May I ever die? No. Didn't he rattle those names off fine? Oh, he's a whiz. Now for the lady. I started to tell you what Miss Morehouse said about her sister-in-law over the telephone. Well, Rush is about to read H.K.'s letters. Mm. All right, Miss Keith. Um... H.K. Fleber, first white child born in Gravelman, South Carolina, the geographic center of the United States. That's H.K.'s own special letterhead say. Is it? Engraved after a pattern originated by himself. See the volcano? Mm. I never heard of any volcanoes in South Carolina. Read. You say I could ever die? No, read. Dear Sky Brother Gook, in hot gum clock in Sim Spittle Cornucopia Lump. Agricola, spinach, add you can give the letter. Ms. Morehouse on the phone this morning particularly asked that. Well, listen to this, Dave. Oh. Well, Vic, you rotten old horse thief, it's been a long time since you wrote. I bumped into Harry Winnie in Syracuse the week before well, last. skip down to the next paragraph. That's just personal items and junk. If you could spare a dime, Gov, I'd be able to... Go no dime. Read. It has occurred to me, Vic, that it's a dirty shame we've the allowed... The gist of what he says there, Sade, is that he is dismayed that a wonderful group like the All-Star Marching Team was permitted to disintegrate. He's all for putting it on his feet again with a bang. Mm. Gee, but I'm hungry. Read. Uh, it has occurred to me, Vic... I've that... always given your mother the gist of the par- paragraph there. Skip down to the next one. Um... We have some mighty fine men. The in gist of that paragraph is that he praises the boys in the group, names them all over. Has a kind word for me, himself, Robert and Slobbert Hink, O.X. Berryman, Y.Y. Flirch, J.J.J.J. Stunboat, and Homer U. McGinty. Well. Uh, okay. We have some mighty fine men. I covered that paragraph with what I just said. Next paragraph. Um, it is gratifying to know that certain Deadwood in the organization has been replaced by such fine timber as the Tyson Stooger and Hermie Wormy. Yeah. H.K. goes on to eulogize the Tyson Stooger and Hermie Wormy. Ah. They represent... Yeah, they represent new blood, he goes on to say. And then what follows, Rush? Um, E. Tyson Stooger and Hermie Wormy... Are hardy, intelligent, and resourceful. Aren't those his words, George? E. Tyson Stooger and Hermie Wormy... Are hardy, intelligent, and resourceful. Yeah, those are his words. I've never met E. Tyson Stooger and Hermie Wormy myself. Can I? Mm. Uh, proceed. Um, now, Vic, I have this in mind. This paragraph answered your question, Kido. Did I ask a question? You were talking about the members of the All-Star Marching Team never getting together. Uh-huh. It is H.K. Fleber's thought that we get together in spirit. Oh. Because, well, listen. How do I? Uh, now, Vic... I have this in mind. He wants all ten of us to be out in our backyards at a certain minute of a certain hour of a certain evening and march by ourselves, alone. Uh, Didn't you do that once before? Yes, we did, but in a very sloppy, unsatisfactory fashion. Mm. H.K. Fleber is worth the thing out in microscopic detail. You see where that is, Henry, there, where he describes... Uh, My idea is simplicity itself. I suggest... Say we decide on Tuesday evening, December the 8th, at 6 o'clock on the dot. We all have staff watches. I go out in our backyard, H.K. Fleaver goes out in his, Robert and Slobber go out in theirs, and so on. The less the Nebraska guys, of course, are four in number, so they can assemble in the same backyard. Don't it work out beautifully? Make talk. How you mean? Neighbors will wonder what's going on, you marching around the backyard. I should give a snap of my fingers for meddling neighbors. Mm-hmm. I'm out in the backyard Tuesday evening, December the 8th, see? I know that scattered over the United States, nine other guys are in their backyards, alert and waiting. I consult my stopwatch. It's four seconds to six. It's three seconds to six. It's two seconds to six. It's one second to six. Come on, march! Well, some stuff, huh? I should say. Read some more on that, Harry. Um, every all-star marcher will, of course, march... In the same direction, south. And every marcher will, of course, take the regular prescribed step of two feet and three inches to the second. That's shaving it down to a fine yard, guess. Yeah. Read the really fine points he's worked out. Um, 
Every all-star marcher will naturally wear his complete large regalia. Now, there's a touch of genius, because a fellow feels more like he's in a parade if he's wearing a costume. You're going to stomp around the backyard in your tassel boots, plumed hat, large robe, and sword? Sure. The neighbors will talk. They can talk and welcome. Mm -hmm. Gee, but I'm hungry. What comes next, Rush? The difficulty? Uh, let's see. Uh, there are certain difficulties that must be overcome. Yeah, yeah. See, he goes on to tell about the different time zones. Does he? He's got a brain on him, that chap. Mm. Lots of nitwits wouldn't have thought of that angle. Mm. You catch on to the angle, don't you? Uh-uh. Think what? Oh, you tell me. If at 6 o'clock I went out in our backyard and started to march, and if at 6 o'clock H.K. Fleber went out in his backyard and started to march, would we be marching in unison? I guess so. We would not. We'd be in our fight. Oh. Because the South Carolina is in the Eastern time zone and we're in the Middle West time zone. Mm. When it's 6 o'clock here, it's 7 o'clock in South Carolina. Oh. Homer Hugh McDancy lives in Oregon, which is in the Western time zone. He's two whole hours earlier than we are. Mm. I don't know about the guys in Nebraska. They may be in a mountain time zone. I think they're the same as us, though. Well, in any case, you perceive that there are difficulties to be overcome. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rita. Uh, other problems to be solved? Oh, concern? next comes real difficulties, say. Yeah. Okay. Robert and Slobber and Hink reside... In a in flat. Yeah. You see, say, they reside in a flat and they have no backyard. Well... Y.Y. Flirch and J.J.J.J. Stunbull live in a tent on a vacant lot, and they have no backyard. Hmm. You see? Yeah. Uh, O.X. Bellyman faces a peculiar situation. Yeah, in that his backyard runs east and west, and if he marched south, he could only take seven steps. See the difficulty? Yeah. Read the rest of it. Uh, hoping that we may start work, work on this movement at once, he goes on to say. Oh, he's a hustler, H.K. Fever. Mm -hmm. All right, Marie. Scum, Bono, William, Nabiscus, Ed, Valor, Insipidus, Eber, Ish, Hawk, Avocado, Sim, Sizzat. Yours forever in the golden shackles of the sacred stars of the Milky Way, I remain affectionately, H.K. Fever. Uh-huh. Nice. Yeah. Mighty nice. Mm -hmm. Now have a dime, Doc? No. Well, fellas, I bet the meat's done by now. Let's go see. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.